Hey guys, uh, this is part two of my review for the woodpecker method on the adjustable platform. Uh, in the description, I'll have a link to part one where I just kind of give a general overview of the book. At first, I was going to uh, kind of do a training session where I kind of went through the problems, but what I thought I'd do was just kind of take from a few of the different chapters and give you a sampling of the types of problems that this book has. So uh, think of it maybe as a training session, but I'll also give my comments on what I think of the selection of problems. In okay, uh, here is uh, the first problem we're gonna look at here. Uh, this is from the easy section. So go ahead and pause the video and see if you can solve it, and then we'll look at the solution in a moment. Okay, let's take a look here. So uh, in the woodpecker method, there are a lot of these, uh, what we call two movers here, where you uh, win some material. And um, what I like about it, and here the answer is knight uh, takes a seven check. And you can see we are winning a pawn here. After knight takes a seven, we have this discovered attack on this bishop here. Bishop takes a six check. So the net result of that is a win of a pawn uh, for white. And this is from uh, Wilhelm Steinitz versus Falk, Moscow, 1896. So a couple things here. Uh, first off, the problems within each chapter are ordered uh, by, in general, by the order of uh, world champions. So we have Steinitz, and then we're gonna then we go into Capablanca. Um, I'm sorry, we go into Lasker and Capablanca. So and so on. Uh, all the way up to, I think the last one I saw was Anand. I don't think I saw any by Carlson, but uh, maybe he's in uh, later chapters. In any case, um, what I like about this is that a lot of the chess servers, uh, like Chess Tempo, uh, often have um, the the margin for, for an edge is usually uh, two pawns or an exchange, where... Here, there are a lot of problems uh, where you're just winning a pawn, uh, which, and, and they're from real games. So uh, it is a, uh, a nice uh, mix of tactics. But let's go on to the second one and um, see how we Okay, do. here's the uh, second problem. Again, we're still in the uh, easy section. So see if you can uh, figure this one out. Okay, um, this problem uh, is Again, another two mover, and here uh, we have, uh, you'll notice that this bishop is protecting this rook here. Um, and so the first move here is rook takes e3. Now, if white were to take back with the pawn, of course, we would uh, just capture this rook here and therefore win a piece because we uh, the rooks are equal and then we want that bishop. But uh, in the game, um, actually in the game, uh, this is from Botvinnik against Pachman. And actually, so Botvinnik was white here. So sometimes the world champion is on the losing end of the combination. Um, white played rook takes uh, g7 check. Ended up, um, ended up uh, losing later in the game. But uh, if we see queen takes e3, and I hope you saw this, the next part of the combination is uh, bishop to f4. Okay, and that pins the queen and king. So again, the, a pretty straightforward two mover here, uh, but you needed to um, look past just the first move, okay? So let's do one more from the easy section and then we'll move on to uh, some of the more difficult uh, problems in the book. Okay, here's the next problem. And on this problem, I want you to uh, try to look a uh, couple moves ahead. Okay, so pause the video and I'll see you when you are done solving the problem. Okay, let's take a look. So here you might notice that uh, black has this battery down the uh, A file, but we have an opportunity to uh, perhaps uh, win uh, the exchange. And so the first move here is knight to A4. And this is from uh, Emmanuel Lasker versus uh, FM. Golge above in Atlantic Ocean, 1924. And here, of course, if uh, black 
takes the knight, then we are just going to uh, win uh, the exchange here. Okay, so uh, instead, uh, black plays rook to a3, which is an attempt to save the rook, of course. And after uh, queen to b2, um, if black were to play b4, then we can actually uh, win a pawn here, as well as cut this rook off from, from play, um, which, uh, of course, would be very uh, debilitating. Now, in the game, um, in the game, Lasker actually just played knight to c take c5 and uh, ended up winning the game. But um, the author of this book likes the text better. And um, just as an interesting side note, uh, there was a game with uh, Magnus Carlsen against, I believe, Aronian. And I think Aronian's the one who, who uh, did this. He cut off one of uh, Carlsen's for like 20 moves and ended up winning the game. So this idea of um, isolating a piece is uh, still relevant today. But um, hopefully uh, you saw that. And now let's go on to uh, the, the next chapter. Okay, uh, this problem is from the intermediate uh, chapter. So a slight step up in difficulty. Uh, go ahead and pause the video and give it a shot. Okay, I uh, hope you were able to solve that one, but let's take a look here. And uh, this is from uh, Carl Hampe versus Wilhelm Steinitz from Vienna, 1859. Again, um, all of these problems uh, involve one of the world champions. So first move in the sequence here is bishop takes d4 check. Of course, uh, uh, this problem, there's a, you can see a lot of firepower pointed towards the king here. And a uh, few responses here by White, and I hope you were able to uh, calculate a few of them. So if um, White takes, then of course we just have checkmate here because this bishop is, okay? Um, if White tries to block here, then uh, we don't have mate, but uh, we're gonna win a lot of material after uh, King to F1, for example. Uh, we might just take this um, this bishop here, and then there's going to be uh, some threats too of of uh, after queen takes uh, g3, for example, queen takes g3, rook takes g3. Uh, if white were to say take this bishop, then we would have rook to h1 check winning with rook over here. Okay, so uh, instead. In the game, uh, we had king to h1, and uh, hopefully you calculated the next move, uh, which is rook takes d3. Okay, of course, the uh, rook cannot be taken by the pawn because it's pinned, and if the queen takes the rook, then uh, we just take the queen because, again, the pawn is pinned. So uh, black wins a piece here and uh, eventually won the game. Okay, uh, here is another problem from the Intermediate Exercises chapter. Uh, see if you can figure it out. Okay, uh, the solution here is a little different than what we saw in the easy chapters. Uh, I observed that in the uh, easier problems, you would often have like a deflection or some type of breakthrough followed by uh, what I would call maybe a uh, primary basic tactic like a fork or a pin. Uh, in this case, often, uh, even though the solution may only be two or three moves, uh, the realization is maybe an attack, something that needs that is not as uh, concrete. And that's what we have here. Um, this is from uh, Wilhelm Steinitz versus Adolf Anderson, uh, London, 1862. And again, here's another pr um, problem where the world champion is on the losing end. So... Um, here we need a uh, a breakthrough. Okay, black is ahead uh, by a pawn, but is there a way we can break into this position? And there is uh, with e3. Now, if we take here, uh, rook to g6, and a mate will be coming fairly uh, quickly here uh, with these uh, rooks on the seventh rank. Go back. F3 was played instead, and then uh, rook to g6 
is going to uh, force our mate in any case. And uh, the game went g4, f takes g4, f4, closing off the uh, g file, uh, bishop to d5, threatening the uh, rook check here, as well as winning this uh, knight. So after knight to d4, um, rook to a6 was played in the game. And uh, the idea there is that after uh, rook takes a6, we have an interesting uh, here with rook to be one check, king to h2, rook to h2, um, h1 check, king to g3, and then rook to h3 is mate. Uh, they don't have the moves in the book, uh, but that's something uh, that hopefully you can see from uh, my commentary here. Okay, so that's the solution to that problem. But you can see that uh, even though the uh, Solution is quite deep. Uh, the idea of breaking in it was uh, the solution or, or the primary thing we were trying to get out of that problem. Okay, let's go to the next chapter, which is the intermediate two chapter. We're just going to look at one problem from there just to illustrate uh, uh, kind of a mix of the difficulties of problems. Okay, okay so this is from the intermediate exercises two chapter, uh, which would be the next level up. Uh, go ahead and pause it. And uh, try to look as deeply as possible. Um, see that there is uh, something of an attack on the king, but uh, the details of how to uh, realize that, what I want you to figure out. Okay, uh, so I noticed in this chapter there's a little bit of an uptick in that difficulty. and uh, But in this particular problem, uh, hopefully you saw some of the main themes as you were solving it. So let's take a look here. Uh, this is from Golyovov versus Max Erve, uh, Carlsbad, 1941. Our world champion is playing black. And you may have looked at Rook, or I'm sorry, Queen to H1 check. And I looked at this for a little bit, thinking uh, King to E2, Queen takes G2 check. But after Queen to H1 check, Bishop to G1 blocks it and uh, analyze a little bit any um, sacrifices here on f3 no longer work so that's not the solution instead uh, rook takes f3 check is the best move and if g takes f3 bishop takes h3 check rook to g2 queen takes g2 is mate so instead queen takes f3 and here uh, this is where the analysis can get kind of deep, but uh, bishop takes f3 um, is kind of a mistake. After g takes f3, white actually has a rook. You notice these rooks here? A uh, rook and two bishops for this queen. Now, he does have, we do have two passed pawns here, so that is helpful, but definitely um, a little more dangerous than what was played in the game. Going back, instead, queen to h1 check right now, best way. Okay. Then after uh, king to e2, now we have queen takes g2 check because this queen is pinned. We're not going to uh, be trading this bishop here. Um, by the way, just going back real quick here, if bishop to g1 then I think we just take the queen right here. Then um, if g takes f3, queen to f3 check, um, I think will lead to mate because, or actually could lead to mate pretty quickly. Okay, let's get back to the uh, text here. Uh, king to e2, queen takes g2, Check, give yourself a gold star if you saw that when you first solved the problem. Uh, king to d3, then we just win this queen here. So uh, this is from the Intermediate Exercises 2 chapter, and uh, we're gonna stop there for today, but um, I'll give you uh, kind of my assessment of the book. I hope that you enjoyed these problems. I tried to pick, um, like in the easy chapter, there were some easier problems. Um, but I wanted to pick a mix to show you that the problem set in this book 
is a little different than what you'll get on uh, some of the tactics servers, um, which is a good thing because you want to be exposed to different types of tactics. Um, we'll talk a little more about the leveling in my final review next week, but I'm already getting the inkling. The There are some easy problems that are appropriate for uh, beginners, but uh, I would maybe recommend um, basic uh, chess exercises uh, for beginners that I did a review of before. I'll put a link of, to that in the description, uh, maybe for uh, real beginners. So um, I'm going to do a few more of the problems this coming week, and then we will uh, see um, what my recommendation is. But so far, I'm really enjoying uh, going through the book, and in my games, uh, I'm already seeing kind of a, uh, at least a um, little uptick in the, my creativity uh, tactically, and I'm going to attribute some of that to uh, studying these problems. I hope you enjoyed that video. That was part two of my uh, three-part review of the Woodpecker Method on the Chessable platform. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button, and uh, if you were, aren't already doing so, um, consider subscribing to the channel. I post uh, weekly videos on chess improvement, both uh, how to improve as well as um, analysis of games and other tips uh, to help you improve. Uh, I'm a fellow uh, traveler on this journey of chess improvement. So if you want to join me, uh, hit that subscribe button, and I hope to see you soon.